I'm the founder of Crowded Learning, and Crowded Learning is a nonprofit organization based here in Chicago. And our mission is really focused on trying to increase the use of open education resources, because while these things are widely available and free, um, we have found that there's limited use within adult education and all levels of education. And so we spent a lot of time thinking, finding out what are the barriers um, to use and skill blocks is sort of one answer to trying to overcome one of those barriers. Um, but our work really focuses on, first of all and foremost, expanding awareness of the resources that are actually out there. So we do that through things like surveying teachers and finding out what open education resources teachers are using with students, in particular adult educators. Um, and then we do a lot of work around promoting effective resources and strategies for actually using those resources in a way that makes sense for your instructional style and, and settings and as well for learner um, needs, learner access, and, and making sure that we're using the right resources in the right sort of contexts. And then thirdly, and this is really where Skillblocks comes in, um, we're looking at ways to experiment with the sharing and the delivery of these resources. And so how can we make it easier for instructors to access, find, and share resources with learners? And then also how can we experiment with ways to make sure learners have easier access to resources that align to the skills that they need? And so I will say there's a number of slides in here I'm going to fly through because I want to get into skill blocks. So um, these are just here for your reference afterwards, but our first step towards this work was just finding out what teachers are using and we've compiled those all into skill directories on our website. Um, and so those are great because you can go to a subject area and see, okay, these are websites that I know other adult educators are using. I can explore those. But we also know that time is a very huge barrier um, to folks using open education resources. And so while we know that there's some really great free and open education resources that you see on the left, and we know that folks use really trusted publisher resources on the right, um, it becomes a matter of finding which lessons from each of these things or which activities align to the skills that I'm supposed to be developing in my learners. And so our experiment with skill blocks was really looking at what if we took all of the content from all of these different sort of sources and pulled them together in one place so that instead of having to sort of start with a skill and then look through table of contents and then search through websites to find things, you can actually identify a skill you want to teach and then see what lessons and activities from all of these resources align to that particular skill to make it easier for you to organize learning for your students in a way that allows you to pair publisher resources with free and open education resources in one place. And then what you do with that is up to you. You could use it as your own curriculum guide, and then you're sharing out these resources in ways that make sense for you. Or you can even share what you're seeing on screen right here, which is a skill block for a specific skill at TABE level M or college and career readiness level C in geometry. Um, and there's a reason for this, and it's not because we think any one resource is better than the other. It's actually because we don't believe there's any single one resource that works best for every single learner. And we know there's gaps, and we know that since the standards came about in 2013, states have been working to figure out what lessons, what resources align to standards, and actually doing analyses of does this lesson in particular fully cover the standard? And so I'm showing on screen a lesson from a newer product, a print product, that's focused on this standard of drawing lines, line segments, rays, and then identifying these in two dimensional figures. When you look at this lesson, it absolutely aligns to this standard. It's going through all of the definitions of these things. It's giving examples. Um, and then students are led through practice problems. But what's actually not happening in this lesson, and this is the entire lesson, is drawing lines, line segments, rays, and angles. And so when you use a tool like skill blocks, 
you can say that this lesson is one of the things that we're going to use as a resource for this skill, but then here are a bunch of other resources that can augment to increase the coverage of that standard and increase the depth of coverage. And so just in like the Khan Academy resources that align to this skill that you can put into a skill blocks, you can see that for all of those things, there's an identify lesson, identify raised lines and line segments, and then draw raised lines and line segments. Identify parallel perpendicular lines and then draw them. Identify angle types and then draw them. So you're providing more robust coverage um, of the particular standard and you're able to use different resources to do that with different modalities. modalities excuse me. So I'm going to jump into skill blocks right now just so you can see when we break out into sessions or the sort of breakout groups. If, if you want to go into a deeper dive, I will definitely do that. And of course, as with Zoom, the little panel is in my way. Um, so I'm going to show just how to get to skill blocks uh, because one thing that of note is that we have a website on crowded learning that's just dedicated entirely to skill blocks. Um, where you can find out about upcoming webinars. We don't have any scheduled right now, but link to our playlist. Um, but you can just click on this to launch skill blocks and I'm actually going to log out. Sorry about that. Um, and this is the login screen. So there's only teacher logins for this platform right now. And the way students access it is once you create a skill block, you just give them a code and then they enter that in here and then they can access the skill block. So I'm, I'm giving you like literally day one, what you see on the platform um, is all you have to do is go to add skill blocks. Now you have to have some sort of awareness of the levels of the college and career readiness standards. And we have videos that I'll point out in a second that walk through all of these steps, but we've organized all the content to the college and career readiness standards. And we felt that was important because again, um, you know, finding what resources that you need and what skills you need to teach to, we know that the CCRS is sort of a standardized set of, of standards that's being used nationwide, that the tests in adult education align to. And so it seemed like the best sort of spine for organizing these resources. So for that lesson I just pointed out on two dimensional figures, I can go to level C, or actually I can do all levels. What's nice about this is it allows you to actually see the progression of skills across all levels. But then I could click on a particular level just to see the specific skills within that level. So I'm going to take that skill that we were just showing lines, line segments and rays and select it. And then I see on the right hand side that there's 20 resources within skill blocks um, amongst the resources that we've aligned in here right now that align to the standard. It's only one standard in this case of draw and identify lines and angles and classify them. You might also know that, you know, measurement is a part of understanding angles too. So maybe you want to be doing a lesson that involves identifying angles, but then also measuring. So in measurement and data, which is another domain, we know that there's geometric measurement and understanding concepts of angles. So now I could add that skill in here as well. And so now there's a total of 34 resources in here that align to both the identification and properties of angles and then also measuring those angles. And I'm just going to stick with one for now, but then all you literally have to do is just click on the things that you want to use and build into your skill blocks. Um, and two of the resources that are listed here are Khan Academy, which most of you are probably familiar with, uh, and math is fun. So I'm just going to grab a couple of these. Um, and add them and I just save. And so now I have literally built a skill block uh, from, from nothing and I can just give it a name. Um, sorry. And then that's it. Um, I can rearrange these in the order that makes sense for me. I can share this code once I've done that with students for them to log into, but I just wanted to show one of the other features that I know is important to folks, and that is adding those publisher resources. So again, we feel that no one resource is best, and we know that educators tend to rely on like print curriculum, which is a little different right now because a lot of us aren't actually using print curriculum because our students don't have access to it. But all you need to do to add print resources is to find the resources that you actually have access to. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly find a geometry book because I want to make sure that we're finding things that align. Again, my panel is in the way. 
Um, so I've added this McGraw-Hill resource. I will add a uh, score boost. I know is one that um, educators are familiar with from New Readers Press, which is one of our partners. And I'm going to find the one that has geometry uh, here and just click that and add it. And this isn't purchasing the book. This is just indicating to skill blocks that this is a resource that my students have that we have in the classroom. And so I want to see what lessons within um, these books that I have access to um, align to this particular skill. So I've added three resources just for demonstration purposes. Now I'm going to go back to my skill block and I can select and add more learning resources. And now you'll see that the lessons from those books um, and I can actually filter it right here to go to my McGraw-Hill resource. So now I'm going to add that. I can go to my Paxson resource and I'm going to add that. And I can go to my New Readers Press resource and I can add that and save. And now all of those resources are within the skill blocks. And again, I could rearrange these in a way that makes sense for me. So sensing I am approaching the end of my time, um, I'm just going to point out sort of some things to help support you. One is on our website, I just showed you actually that all of our updates and information around skill blocks are here, but we also have a YouTube playlist that walks through what I just did in very fast order with little three to two to three minute videos on each of the steps of really getting into skill blocks. We also have recordings of four webinars that we did in March and April that really dive into strategies for using skill blocks, which and this is the one point that I really want to close with is that um, skill blocks is designed to be very flexible. So you might simply be using it as a curriculum reference where you create all of these things for skills that you teach so that you can reference it whenever you need to find resources. You might organize the skill blocks as we're showing and then share skill blocks with students as is. Um, meaning that you've actually found the resources, you've organized them in a manner that makes sense as maybe a playlist for them to do independent work. And then again, all you have to do is share the code with them and then they can access it and there's no account creation. Or you might want to select specific activities within a skill block and then every single one of them, the online ones at least, have this little copy icon. And then you can copy paste them and share them out within things like Google Classroom or an Awakelet or Remind or WhatsApp or whatever tool you're using for pushing out content. Um, and so our focus is really on organization of these resources to make them more readily available to learners and also the delivery. So Skillblocks does both of those, but I'm also just going to do a quick plug for something that we did in partnership with the Florida Literacy Coalition, and that is taking Khan Academy, which we know is the most widely used open education resource in adult education, but we also hear from instructors that students have difficulty knowing which lessons to go to. So Florida Literacy Coalition had created a web page for GED self-study in math using Khan Academy. And we approached them a few months ago to say, hey, we found this really cool app building tool. Um, I'd be we'd be interested in working together to develop an app that takes the same content that's on your website and puts it into an app-based format. And the result of that is what you see on the right here. We're doing our official launch in a couple weeks, but this is just another way of taking free resources and organizing them in a way that makes sense for direct to learner delivery, which is obviously important right now, especially um, where a number of our learners we know are using mobile devices only for their access to online resources. Um, and I'm really excited that we're doing this session today with us and the folks in Arizona because one of the other things that we're tracking right now is Florida did this work. They did all the legwork of organizing the resources. We just helped with the delivery. And we're gonna learn about Arizona's incredible effort right now to curate and create open education resources and then pull them together in one place. And so there's sort of three parts of the puzzle that are, that are being solved right now with these innovations. One is the curation of finding the resources that actually align. The second is organizing them in a way that makes sense for teachers. And then the third is delivery. Um, and so I'm really excited that these things are happening as they're happening because we know that there's just going to be an increased need for these types of resources for adult education.